Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to My Deep Guide. Today we are taking an in-depth look at the latest edition of the Kobo Libra series, the Kobo Libra 2. So let's check it out. All right, and here is the Kobo Libra. Um, even though it's white on the cover, the version that I got is the black one. Very similar packaging like the uh, Kobo Sage, pretty much identical. And yeah, you get the device, user manual and cable. Um, I also received the sleep cover, the red version. So we'll be checking that out as well. And inside of the box you get the device, USB-C cable, and the appropriate documentation. And let's check out the sleep cover. And here it is. It's pretty much identical like the last uh, Libra generation cover. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly the same, which is a good thing because the previous one was excellent. So is this one. So it has the magnetic features here where you can actually turn it around and set it into different kinds of modes. You simply slide the device in into locking it and that's it you're done and then you just whoop, and magnets hold the cover together and I've had this uh, same version of the cover for my Libra uh, H2O for I don't know now well over a year maybe even two years now and yeah it just works really really good um, it adds minimum amount of weight but it protects the device really really well from all the corners pretty much and um, yeah i love the the multi-functionality of this one is actually something that works rather well if it ain't broken why fix it <laughs> well, that's not gonna work. <laughs> okay, so, and here's Kobo Libra 2. As you can see, the design has changed a little bit. It has grown some fur, some really cute little legs, and a big bushy tail. All right. All right, and here is the Kobo Libra 2. So this is the successor of their very popular and pretty much my absolute favorite e-reader that I've had and still have, which was the Kobo Libra H2O. So they dropped the H2O because now pretty much all of their devices, uh, or most of their devices, are waterproof. So we have the same general uh, design, but everything has been changed just a little bit. It is priced at $180. Overall, what's it for? It's a dedicated e-reader device so that you can read outside, inside, uh, just before you go to bed because it has a fantastic front light, etc, etc. So, bread and butter e-reader, but a very good one at that. So let's start with the design and the build quality. Well, like most of the devices that I've seen from Kobo, uh, Kobo Libra 2 is exceptionally well built. Yes, it is all plastic, but it is a nice type of plastic. So it's not the super shiny one. It is a little bit uh, matted. It's not super fingerprint happy and it's not super hard. It has a little bit of softness to it. You have standard features here. So we have the seven inch screen, which is indented slightly so that hasn't changed either and as you can see the build quality is really really nice and precise what i specifically love is this mesh on the back i really really loved that design and uh yeah, the feel of it and how it helps with the uh, grip while holding the device um, and everything else. I loved it on Libra 1 and I am happy to see that it remains and that it's a part of the Libra 2 as well. At the first glance, it will look almost identical to Libra 1, but everything has been changed. So you can see that the curvature of the lines is very, very similar. But when I put them neck to neck, you can see that the Libra 2 is ever so slightly taller. When we flip them to the side, then we will notice one other thing, which is that it is slightly thicker on the thin end, because it actually has a, th both of them have a thick end and a thin end. On the thin end, Koblo, Koblo, Koblo Libra 2 is slightly thicker than the Libra 1. The other difference is that on the Libra 1, 
we had this flat line and then whoop, an angle and it just goes another straight line here for holding and the button themselves they're more sharper with edges more defined shape and they are recessed into this little groove something that i really loved because i kept holding it like this and then it kind of uh, you rest your thumb here and then you're just gonna press here and there on the libra 2 we no longer have that uh straight edge instead we have this kind of a uh, smooth uh, almost uh, indentation uh, going out here and then we just have the edge around so it's like a tiny little bit of a pool shape and the buttons themselves as you can see they have been redesigned they are much more smoother more oval as far as the edges go and gone is the recess that we've had before and from this angle there we go you can actually see with the shyness that uh, recess that is actually changed so it's no longer a flat surface then joink a line and then another flat surface like it is on the Kobo Libra one it has now been kind of smoothed out. I think it's ergonomically sound. It actually works great. And I think both of them actually work great. And it comes down to personal preference. For me personally, I'm not a huge fan of having this here because it's kind of constantly there. Maybe it provides for a better holding experience, probably, but I have been using the Kobo Libra one for such a long time that I'm simply used to this, not having that line here and used to this little recess there. So for me, uh, I can't really be objective because I've used this, used this for uh, quite, a, quite a long time. So this is a little bit of a change. One thing that I do notice is that difference in thickness and Kobo Libra 2 definitely feels chunkier than the Kobo Libra 1. So that's something that's most definitely the, uh, a change. And in fact, when you actually go between Kobo Libra 1 and the Sage, the Sage, because it's so much thinner, it actually feels more nimble and less chunky so that is definitely something that uh, uh, is a difference between the two that being said uh, unlike Kobo Sage that has a 1200 milliamp battery Kobo Libra 2 has a 1500 milliamp battery and that is a good thing however Kobo Libra 1 was a little bit lighter and that's something that I immediately actually noticed that difference in chunkiness and weight Kobo Libra 1 I believe was 192 grams and this one is 215 grams 20 and a change grams of a weight difference but combined with that a little bit of a difference in the chunkiness and everything else it it, the difference is tiny but it is there so when i went from libra 1 and i went to libra 2 it felt a little bit chunkier and a little bit heavier so that's something that is definitely a thing that i noticed not in a meaningful way but it was just there the design on both devices i believe is really good but personally i prefer the old one um, but then again, the differences are so small that that, I believe, it just comes down to personal preference. The specifications of the Libra 2 are as follow. You get the 7-inch HD e-ink Carta 1200 touchscreen, so no Wacom. This is not a writing-enabled device. It runs a 1264 by 1680 resolution, uh, which means that it has 300 ppi pixel resolution or density. Uh, it has 32 gigabytes of internal storage, non-expandable. It has a 1 gigahertz single-core CPU, I believe. It has a Wi-Fi but in this case only 2.4 gigahertz so you don't have 5 gigahertz um, wi-fi support uh, battery life it has a 1500 milliamp battery there's going to be a section on battery life because it did the testing it is waterproof up to 60 minutes in two meters of water it has the excellent excellent front light comfort light pro which is something that i absolutely adore about kobo devices especially both sage and the libra 2 and the libra 1 as well they all had a carefully calibrated uh, front light and that's something that you most definitely feel and see and it's a very very valuable element in a reader so for me that's a big big plus that um 
Kobo devices have. The main difference between the Libra 1 and the Libra 2 is that this device now, the Libra 2, has the ability to support Bluetooth devices, which means that you can hook up um, a pair of speakers or a pair of uh, earbuds to it and listen to audiobooks because that is the second big addition that both uh, Kobo Sage and Kobo Libra 2 have. Now you also have the ability to listen to the new editions of the uh, Kobo audiobooks. The price is $180 without any uh, sleep cover added. The sleep cover is another $40 if that's what you're interested in. So in total we're looking at $180 uh, for the device alone or $220 with the device and the uh, sleep cover uh, as a package. The battery life on the Libra 2 was as expected, excellent. So I was doing multiple tests and multiple repetitions of tests in different kind of uh, uh, conditions, but the battery just lasts and lasts and lasts. And basically, yeah, I read for an hour and it spends 1% of the battery. So yeah, I don't know if it spent the whole percent or less than percent or maybe a little bit more than percent than one percent but this is the same exact behavior that i had with my uh kobo libra one and that one also just lasts and lasts and lasts so everything is normal and as it should be with the libra 2 and the battery life and the projection is yes on standby it definitely should last for weeks and for reading you're looking at uh 50 plus or maybe even a hundred hours Hours, depending on the front light conditions of course because I never pump the front light more than 30% because uh, yeah it's an e-ink device I mean I don't need it to glare at me that much plus the reflectivity of the screen is really good so you don't really need to compensate with that front light that much so I usually keep it around 15-16% in daytime if I need it at all or off and in the night time I actually even lower it down to 8% or something like that and with those settings it just lasts for a very 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 long time which is excellent like most Kobo devices it has an accelerometer so it is able to flip around as you flip it around and it does so quickly enough so that by the time you have settled down it settles down as well general overview there's nothing really new so you have your home screen where you have your recent files and you have your control panel for the brightness which is of course uh, dual front light so you can have the blue light and you can have the night light or you can turn it to automatic if that's something that you want and the brightness level actually goes really really from very finely tuned super low intensity that you can really use it in complete darkness just before you're going to go to sleep to very very bright but one thing that's really important is that the uniformity and the comfort of this front light i think it's a it's a good thing that it's called comfort light because it is one of the most comfortable front lights and most uniform front lights that i have seen on a device and it's pretty much the same one as here and um, yeah uh, it's just incredibly comfortable front light to use and among the best ones on the uh, market next to the home screen you have your uh, library which is your books and then you can sort by authors series or collections everything like you would normally have uh, but you also have the store which is called the discover and here is the big uh, new edition traditionally you would have ebook ebooks which is your ebook store and the overdrive which is the place where you actually rent books from a digital library but now we also have the audiobooks like we did on sage and if you go to view all you will have the access to a larger selection of audiobooks here now since this is a very very new uh, uh, feature there is not a huge amount of titles but there is a significant amount of titles here so that's something to actually get you started now next to it you have just the more button which is additional options and you get your settings activity you get your uh, pocket integration which i absolutely never 
uh, am able to get to work. So then you have your wish list help and of course the beta features. In the beta features is the web browser that people are sometimes interested in and I'm just going to kind of demonstrate how does this look like. Technically speaking, yes, it has a uh, web browser and yes, it functions. However, it is kind of limited and it is a little bit slower, especially when you actually start loading a lot of content and quite a lot of pages have like uh, commercials and things like that. It will load them, it didn't really crash, but it does take quite a bit of time and as soon as you actually get to media rich content, which is, let's face it, the majority of the internet, then it really gets bogged down. And uh, yeah, the image quality is great, as you can see, it really, really has an excellent image quality, but this kind of performance, even while it's degraded, it's really, really slow. And it's not something that I would call a comfortable experience, but it does function. So I just wanted to kind of show that. So it works this way. It works the way it does. And if that's something that you're okay with, then great. I guess you can look at it that it's a nice thing to have an option should you need it at some point. The image quality and the screen is really, really good. And you can actually notice a little bit richer and darker blacks than you had on the Libra one, a little bit sharper and crisper image and everything just pops up a little bit better. However, this is primarily a reader and those differences you can only notice really in uh, uh, images. As soon as you actually get to the text, it's a very, very similar type of an affair. Both of them are excellent. So as Libra one was excellent, now Libra 2 is more excellent -er. You have, still have the ability to easily actually navigate through the pages. It's super responsive and you are able to navigate either with the buttons or with the single touch here to actually go to the next page and the previous page. And of course the middle press will bring you more options where you can adjust do you want to have auto rotations, uh, brightness uh, controls, font controls, reading statistics, additional settings uh, so that you can format your footer, uh, header and all that kind of stuff and the combination of the orientation of the buttons. So overall, I think it's um, it used to work great and it continues to work great as a reader. Primarily for me, Kobo platform lends itself for reading books and that's what it does really, really good. As soon as I get to some documents or something like that, then it's not really the one that I would prefer. So you have the standard functionalities of long pressing and marking your text and uh, adding notations and removing highlights, doing a search, doing a dictionary search here. So there we go. So you can search in books, search in Wikipedia, search in Google, which is actually quite nice because when you go with search in Google, now it uses that beta feature and it goes into uh, the web browser and you get a Google search of the word that you used. And in that context, I do like the, uh, uh, the, the presence of the web browser. So if I'm just thinking about the web browser on its own, it doesn't make sense and it's not something that I like. But when you actually couple it with what this product is about and it's like an added tool that you can actually search the web if you want or if the, the dictionary is not enough, then you can actually search the web, then it actually makes a heck of a lot more sense. Nothing was wrong with the Kobo Libra 1 in that department and certainly nothing is wrong with Kobo Libra 2 and that's a good thing to see. And also the Kobo platform is a really good and strong and stable platform, which means that as soon as I powered up the uh, Libra 2, logged into my account, and the books actually synchronized, I can just go to my annotations that I made on the Libra 1 and everything is there. No hassle, no uh, learning curves, no nothing. You just log in, the device and the platform do everything for you. That's how these things should work. And now we come to the conclusion time for the Libra 2. Ultimately, the Libra series 1 and 2, they are a ebook reader. So you need to read books on it, rent books, and that's pretty much it. And for that, it's really hard to fault it uh, pretty much for anything. 
possible faults that people may complain about are, and this was me really, really scraping and trying to kind of figure out what could I uh, find as cons. So, con number one would be not that great with uh, handling PDF documents. It does support them and it actually works. The speed is fine and everything's fine, but the formatting options and all that kind of stuff, it's a seven inch screen, doesn't have too many great capabilities, so it's not really meant to do that. It's primarily an ebook reader, and if you intend to use it as a PDF reader as well, then you have to keep in mind that it's uh, it can do it, but it's not the best at that. Mainly due to the small screen and the lack of formatting options or the flexibility of formatting options. The second con that I could think of is that uh, if you look at pocketbook products, they usually come with a micro SD slot, and the Kobo products don't come with a micro SD slot. Then again, it's a waterproof product, so you really don't want an additional haul on it. But I do know that some people are adamant, especially comic book readers, they are very much adamant that they would like to have uh, a lot of space. And if that's you, then that's something that you have to keep in mind. However, as far as the image quality goes and the screen quality and the readability goes for uh, comic books and things like that, excellent, excellent image quality there. Unlike Ellipsa and the Kobo Sage, Kobo Libra 2 for some reason doesn't have Dropbox support. Now for that I didn't really have to kind of scrape as a con, that's an actual con that I think is... I don't see the reason why, uh, simply because uh, even with the limited PDF capabilities and all that kind of stuff, it still can do it, which is fine, and it would be a good uh, option to at least have accessibility to the Dropbox, especially because Kobo Sage has it. And they are very, very similar platforms. So um, that's something that I wish that maybe they will add at a later that uh, Dropbox support on the Kobo Libre 2, but at the moment it doesn't have it and that's a genuine con. And the final con would be that it's a little bit chunkier and a little bit heavier than its predecessor, which is a little bit strange. So usually when you get to the newer devices, they are thinner, they are lighter and all that kind of stuff. The differences are not that large between Libre 1 and Libre 2, but they are there. So that's definitely something that I felt and something that I kind of uh, uh, reacted to very little, but it is something that was there. All right, and now on to the pros for the Libra 2. And the first pro is the design and the build quality. Uh, it's really, really well built. It is waterproof. Now, me personally, I prefer still the design and the ergonomics of the Libra 1, but that's not saying that this is bad at all. On the contrary, it's really, really good, but I think it just comes down to the personal preference. The second pro for me, for sure, is the image quality. So the image quality has been improved and you have better contrast, better crispness, even when you actually compare it with the uh, old device. So that's something that's a definitive pro, especially for those who want to read comic books or uh, yeah, picture books of some type, etc, etc. Another very, very big plus for me is the front light. So that Comfort Light Pro, it is a really, really great performing front light. And I think that's, as I mentioned before, a very important uh, aspect of an e-reader. So if you have a dedicated device that's an e-reader only, it really has to be able to perform that. It has to have a huge dynamic range of intensity and a full range of colors so that you can adjust it any way that you want. And this one definitely delivers. And usually the readers have this problem that when you set the intensity of the front light to the bare minimum, it's still not low enough. Because if you're laying in a bed, you're gonna put it to the warm light all the way and to the minimum light. It actually goes down so low that uh, even in pitch black, if you're tired and you keep it at the lowest setting, it may be a tiny bit too dark, which is a good thing because then you can just ink it to 2% maybe, and then it's absolutely perfect, and you just snooze off immediately, which is a really good thing to have, because that's one of the points of these devices, to help you go to sleep without the glaring screen and the unhealthy blue tint of the LED lights. So, Comfort Pro Light, absolutely awesome. Another pro, I think, 
not yet, but it will be over time, is the addition of the audiobooks. I'm a huge fan of audiobooks. I mean, uh, no matter what I do, I'm constantly listening to an audiobook on Audible. Now, uh, Kobo is just starting their audiobook library, so it isn't a huge selection yet, and I don't know how the program will develop, but I do welcome it as an option, and I really love the idea that if the Libretu is your reader companion, people who read books, they like to also listen to them. Now, things that remain to be seen, as I said, it's a young platform, it remains to be seen, will the Kobo introduce a program that you can actually buy a book that's both, uh, and that you get both titles, the reader and the audiobook? Can you actually synchronize the progress? Could you be able to actually listen to the audiobook and then synchronize and continue reading on it and then go back to the uh, audio uh, audiobook and things like that? That would be awesome. But I don't think any of those things are available yet. As I said, it's a very, very early or uh, fresh platform. But it's definitely a nice thing to see that now this device has Bluetooth capability and it has the uh, option of listening to your audiobooks on the Kobo platform as well. All right, so what's the overall conclusion for the Kobo Libra 2? I like it. I think it's a really good device. It's a little bit on the pricier side of things. Then again, it is a seven inch screen, not a six inch screen. It's a seven inch screen. It's a 1200 card tie. It has amazing front light battery, has 32 gigabytes of storage, has a really, really good battery life. It's waterproof, all of those kinds of things. So. Without the cover, the price for me does make sense. With the cover, it actually goes a little bit over 200 bucks and then it's a little bit on the pricier side and then you actually have to think, do I want Libra 2 or do I maybe wanna splash out and get the uh, Sage? Because as a reader, Sage is absolutely fantastic as well. So that's something to kind of think about. I think it comes down to the price differences, budgeting, and also the format that you like. Uh, some people also, don't like the uh, flush screen on their readers, they prefer the recessed screen, in that case Libra 2 is most definitely for you. So I think Kobo was really really smart by launching these two products at the same time, so that people can choose because there are individual preferences for sure. And whether or not you're going to lean towards the Sage as your ultimate reader or the Libra 2 as your ultimate reader, Kobo is now covering pretty much all of those uh, uh, areas and they are within a similar price range. Of course, Sage is more pricey because of the note-taking capabilities, Wacom layer and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, for me, Libra 2 makes sense if you don't already have Libra 1. So that's the only thing. I already have my Libra 1 and while the addition of the audiobooks and the new screen is definitely something that's nice and something that I like, it's not enough to actually for me personally to uh, abandon my Libra 1 and jump onto the Libra 2. If, however, you don't have either Libra 1 H2O or anything else and you want to enter the Kobo uh, landscape and the Kobo environment, then, and you're looking for a small reader that's going to be a reliable long-term companion for your reading needs, uh, Libra 2 absolutely fits those needs. So yeah, Libra 1 was an absolute fantastic e-reader, Libra 2 takes on that torch and continues on moving forward. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye!